And here's the dot pattern that we use in level two to demonstrate the 10 part. When the child is completing this problem and we are just asking them to tell us what this is, one of the things we want them to do is to put a very clear circle around the 10 part in the worksheets. So what we do is we say, circle the 10 part, there's the 10, I want one set of 10. And when they say, I want one set of 10, we say, let's write the one set of 10. That's one set of 10, let's write that part first. And then how many singles do we have? We have three singles, and that goes in the single spot. So we say, one set of 10 and three singles. How much is that? And then sometimes they'll say 13. If they just say one set of 10 and three singles, I'm perfectly happy with that. But we do want them clearly to circle always their one set of 10 and to say one set of 10 while they're circling it. And then to say one set of 10 when they write it because that will identify this with this portion. What you don't want is to have a child that has this understanding. If I say, where's the 10 part? Which number is 10? They'll say, oh, that's 10, Miss Lorbeth. And I say, which part of it is 10? They're like, like, that's 10. I'm like, well, only this part is 10. It's one group of 10. The zero is a placeholder. What that means is, even if I wrote it this way, if I wrote my 10 in this box, and I didn't write anything here. I'd still have one group of 10. I'd still have a 10. So you need to make a clear definition of the fact that our, our system rests on where it is. And a lot of children, you know, they put the zeros there, but they don't realize that the zero is a placeholder. It is not uh, a number representing anything on its own right now. So, you know, ask them to say, oh, write 300 for me. And I'm gonna write a box. And you might actually even put four spaces in the box, like so. And say, write 300. And say, yep, in that position, that means 300. The, the fact that we have zeros means that they're just placeholders, okay?